Hey everybody, this is Structural Steve again, and in this video I'm going to give you a general overview of OpenBridge Designer, otherwise known as OBD. Talk about you know, what exactly is OpenBridge Designer, what all is contained inside of it, and what you can do with it. So the first question I get asked a lot is, you know, what is OpenBridge Designer, or OBD? You know, is it something that I've never used before? Is it something brand new that I'll have to learn all over again? And the answer is mostly no, it's something we have used before. And the best way that I kind of can describe it is it's a container or a box that, you know, houses different products that we've used to use in the past. So inside of OBD, you know, the circle here, you have OpenBridge Modeler, LeapBridge Steel, LeapBridge Concrete, and RM Bridge. And, you know, these are just the, the old standalone products that we used to use, you know, on an everyday basis. Now they're just all contained inside of OpenBridge Designer. And you know, the overall intention of OBD is to help manage all the different files for a project, as well as offer a one-way data flow between OBM and analysis software to ensure that everything is in sync with the BIM workflow. Now, one important thing to note is that all of these analytical files in here, so like the LeapBridge Steel files, the LeapBridge Concrete files, the RM Bridge files, those analytical files are stored internally in the OBD file. They're not external or separate. They're inside of that OBD file. And now there's two main workflows in OBD. There's the standalone workflow and the BIM workflow. And I'll give a brief overview of each one right now, but I'll get into a more in-depth analysis of each workflow in other videos. So the standalone workflow, you know, the user has the option to work independently with OpenBridge Modeler, LeapBridge Concrete, LeapBridge Steel, and RM Bridge. The physical model and analytical model are not connected in any way, and geometry can be input and created into the analytical models. So this is more of what we're used to in terms of using the standalone product, right? If I wanted to just go right into, you know, LeapBridge Concrete and specifically into you know, like the substructure module RC Peer and go to a, a peer design in there, this is the workflow I'd use. That standalone workflow. You know, I don't want to necessarily do anything in OBM first. I just want to go in and start doing some. Uh, quick analysis. So I'm just going to use that standalone workflow. Now the other one is the BIM workflow. Now in this case, the OBM model must be created first and transferred to the analytical software. So the geometry and material property updates must be made in OBM and updates sent to the analytical software. So OpenBridge Modeler in this, in this workflow controls all the geometry inputs as well as the material inputs and you can't change any of those in the analytical solutions. You have to make those changes in OBM and push those changes to the analytical software. And when you do this, you know, some of you might be worried about losing you know, load combinations or loads or other things that you have in there, other, any kind of design information. Uh, when you push those updates, those geometric changes into the analytical solutions like LeapBridge Concrete, LeapBridge Steel, you know, your designs shouldn't get blown out in any way. But there is a, a pretty good guide in the OBD product manual that explains what they consider to be you know, major or minor changes to the geometry and things like that. So you'll be able to know ahead of time what's going to be, what the ramifications are of updating geometry and, and OBM and pushing them to the analytical software so that you can kind of plan accordingly. Another important thing to note is, you know, in a single OBD file, you can have multiple bridges in the BIM workflow and or multiple bridges or files in the standalone workflow all in that one file. So for you know, designs requiring multiple runs, such as a you know, peer design, you might have a, a main run you know, and another uh, run with like you know, centrifugal turned off or you know, pile load analysis and then you need another run for a service three check or something like that. You, know, you can store all three of those runs in that single OBDX file. So that is one nice you know, benefit of using this OBD uh, file type. Uh, another important thing to note is that in order to open up an OBM file, an OpenBridge modeler file, using OBD, OpenBridge Designer, you first need to have or create an OBD file that the OBM file is associated with. So therefore, you know, each OBM model should have a corresponding OBD file that way the OBM model can be opened using OBM or OBD. And another important thing to know about OpenBridge Designer is that it is a, a single access file type as of February 2021. So this means only one person can access that file at a time. 
And this is something that they're working on fixing since there's you know, a lot of data, or potentially a lot of data and a lot of files that can be stored in that OBD file. Um, so at some point in the future, hopefully it will be a, a multi-user access type file. But uh, currently it is just a single access file. And some other quick things to note here about this uh, image you see here. So here in this big circle here, we have the, the main OBD program. And off to the side here, we can also see what the interoperability is with uh, OpenBridge Designer. So it does integrate uh, with Pro Structures, which is the concrete and steel detailing solution from Bentley. Also integrates with iTwin Design Review. So this is what you can use to push your, your eye models to in terms of doing reviews on 3D models. Uh, GINT is their geotech software, so if the, the geotech on a project is using GINT, then you can actually integrate some of those boring logs and things like that into the OBM model. LuminRT, this is going to be your uh, graphic software, so this is where you're going to push it to to do the fancy you know, renderings and videos and fly-throughs and things like that. Um, as well as Synchro over here, the last one, Synchro is just going to be their their uh, four or sometimes it can be considered 5D scheduling software where in the sense where you can tie the model and the model elements to a schedule and get that uh, that fourth dimension and even with cost loaded too so then you have the, the fifth dimension there. And that's all I have for this video. Uh, again I just wanted to focus on just a broad overview of what Open Bridge Designer really is, what's you know contained inside of it, what is it interoperable with and in some future videos I'll get into the specific workflows like the standalone workflow and the BIM workflow to show you what it really is like you know going through those workflows and, and working inside the program. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did go ahead and hit that subscribe button you see in the screen now. Give the video a like and share it with others. See you guys in the next video.